Greetings, YouTube. Apparently, my head is very shiny today. I find that interesting. Um, today, I'm going to be reviewing the latest nonfiction book I have read, Is Asimov on Physics by Isaac Asimov. I don't have the copy of the book to show you because I've already given it away to someone I work with. Um, I picked it up at a yard sale for about a quarter, so my investment in the book was somewhat small. Um, I wasn't aware of this fact, but apparently um, at one time Isaac Asimov wrote a lot of essays based on science of different varieties in a science fiction magazine. It might have been amazing stories, I can't quite remember. He mentions in the book, but it, it slipped my mind. And uh, they would take these essays, and the essays would vary from topic to topic. Um, at the end of a year, they would comp compile them into uh, one volume and, and, and then release them. And over time, they would go out of print. Um, of course, anything being out of print that Isaac Asimov had penned, something that pained Mr. Asimov to no end. So he decided that one of the ways that he could make these available to people again was he would collect the essays that were of specific topics into one volume. So he collected a bunch of physics essays into one volume and had those essays printed. Uh, he did the same for chemistry and astronomy. Um, interestingly enough, the physics book is available on Amazon right now for like a dollar forty-five, so a dollar forty-five cents. That's a reasonable amount of money. So if you're interested in reading this, you can go get it. But th some of the other collections are in the twenty and up range. I'm quite impressed by that fact that that his work on other fields was viewed as more valuable than the physics, and I think I might know why. Now the book is very well written. He has a wonderfully conversational tone. His voice comes through. I've heard his voice, so I've kind of got it in my head. But his voice comes through, and he speaks to the reader, and it's as though he's kind of just telling you this this story in a lot of ways that um, James Burke or Carl Sagan could really speak to the reader um, very effectively. And Asimov is is great at this. Um, I wish he had written every. Uh, science textbook I had ever read when I was in school. I would have done far better um, in those classes than I was in school if I had something written as, as effectively and as uh, engagingly as Mr. Asimov does. So from the get-go, the book is quite well done. But it was the copy I looked at at least, I read it was at least printed in 1974. So things are right and kind of dated. Now there are things that haven't changed and he covers a lot of physics basically from the earliest point of where physics began to become de developed up through quantum mechanics. But he doesn't have the latest information on some of the subatomic particles. I don't think he touches quarks at all. Um, he has nothing on string theory or M theory. Uh, so there's a very dated tone to a lot of what he's writing about. And unfortunately there's also the fact that he had an ego the size of Jupiter. And he makes a couple of direct references to his uh, ego in the book. And he kind of does them in an offhand way as a joke. Um, but the problem is, is that in other spots of the book, his ego shines through even when he is not attempting to do so. The man was an arrogant SOB. Um, he also was apparently a bit of a sexist because there is a misogynistic passage in there that kind of made me shake my head. Um, I had the fortune of, when I was a young, younger person, I think I was 19, of encountering a woman who was in her early 60s that had been hit on by Isaac Asimov at a convention when she would have been far younger. Um, apparently he was a bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a rake, which doesn't surprise me in the least. Um, so if you can get kind of past Isaac Asimov's foibles, his little quirks, the, the things that made him flesh and blood like we are, the book is very good at explaining physics in a very conversational town. Now, he does throw math at the reader. Um, there's quite a few formula in the book which he discusses and, and he references. So he'll, put like, he'll put a formula in and he'll say like, uh, equation 22 and then he may refer to that later in the in the book and you can go back and look at it if you want to. Um, he does assume a level of mathematic competence that I do not possess. Maybe the readers of his fiction in the 50s and 60s were more well versed in um, math than I am, but 
I was a little lost in that. But he does explain what he's talking about, so I was I, I had the advantage of being able to kind of roll with the punches, if you will, and pick up what he was talking about with any difficulty. So I didn't lose anything, but if I had a more comfort and, and a higher level of skill in math, the book would have had a different, a greater depth to me, I believe. Um, but he's not afraid to throw mathematical con concepts out. It is nice when he talks about big numbers. He discusses them in both the conventional, like, you know, 0 0.005, and then he'll give the mathematical um, equivalent of that, you know, like 5 times 10 to the negative 12 or something like that. So having the different notations, I think, is useful to the reader to get them to think about um, numbers in different ways. He also talks about how billions is an unfamiliar term. Maybe it was an unfamiliar term in the 70s, but we're all comfortable with the term billion now which is kind of sad because we're billions and billions, trillions of dollars in debt. And so those numbers have now become common parlance. But if you're looking for a book that explains physics to the reader in a way that is very comfortable, um, is quite engaging, and I really enjoyed the book, um, I definitely recommend his nonfiction. Now, I've read two of his nonfiction books, and frankly, I find them vastly superior to his fiction work. I've read some of his fiction work when I was younger, when I was in the teens and early 20s, and frankly, I don't really remember any of it. It just didn't stick into my head. But his nonfiction writing is clear and precise, and I really enjoyed it. If you can get past his, you know, his misogyny and his ego, um, but that may not be easy. His ego is on pages after pages of this book. Um, but I enjoyed the book, I had a good time reading it, and I recommend it to anyone out there who likes physics or Isaac Asimov.